Hello and welcome to Rosetta and the Well, a horror visual novel developed by Atelier in the Wonderland, available on Itch.io. And apparently, one day, a mermaid appears in your backyard in your well. Uh, apparently. I guess we'll see what that means. And a little content warning though, this game is tagged as horror. So there may be some disturbing elements. Viewer discretion is advised. Let's begin. Alright, let's check out this visual novel. For some time now, there's been this strange little well just off the back garden of my house. I'm not sure where it came from or how long it's been there. All I know that is that it simply showed up one morning after a particularly heavy storm the night before. Maybe it was because I'm used to seeing strange events or because nothing eventful seemed to come of it, but I initially didn't pay it too much thought. Just a well. On one occasion, while I was out tending to my garden, I swore I could hear something coming from within it. It sounded like a voice. An indistinct sort of whimpering mixed with the sound of sloshing water. Save the game. That's what matters. <laughs> Uh, also, I play. I, I feel like I've played a few games that had like a whole well theme to it. It's like someone's stuck in the well, or you're stuck in the well. Uh, um, no, watch and wait. I rooted myself in place for a few minutes, listening to the noise until I was sure I was not coming from anywhere besides that well. Or I was sure it was not coming from anywhere besides the well. The longer I waited, the more insistent the sound seemed to become. Even so, I dare not move. I couldn't help but feel that something bad would happen if I were to give in. And yet despite all reason and logic, a small part of me felt drawn towards the sound, as if an outstretched hand was beckoning me from the murky depths. But which part of me do I listen to in the end? Yoga. Kotowaru. I run away. Ah! <laughs> I got up and ran from the side of the well back into the safety of my home. I avoided the garden for the rest of that day. No matter how hard I tried to drown them out, the image of the well, the sounds coming from it, I could rid neither of them from my mind. Ultimately, I never did find out what was making that noise, nor did I have the heart to do so. I suppose that this choice would be the correct one in the long run. But then, why do I feel so scared right now? Alright. Neutral ending. Scared again? Okay. I always pick this kind of ending first. <laughs> it's like, r just run away. <laughs> you know, never engage in the main plot and simply leave. That's what you do in real life. So let's actually engage with the story and approach the well. You know, the main plot device of the entire game, I'm, I'm imagining. That's why it's in the title. Somehow, the well looked eerier. Eerier? 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 Eerier, I guess that's the word. Uh, somehow the well looked eerier viewing it up close. It made my discomfort rise to a considerable degree. It was probably from the early morning dark, but the water looked so murky and black, more like ink. It was just a bit less viscous. Not to mention, I couldn't make out anything in the darkness. The sound became clearer now. I could definitely tell it was a voice, but the words were too muffled to discern. On inside the well. Hello? Are you alright down there? No response. Perhaps I wasn't loud enough that time. Call out again. Hello? Can you hear me? Says Rosetta, by the way. I, obviously, that's the main character. It's the name of the game, Rosetta and the Well. Still nothing. Perhaps it was all a trick of the wind. The well looked like full of water, so there's no way to know any land dweller could lurk at the bottom without drowning. But I can't help but wonder still. Okay. I don't know. Well, I tried leaving before. I imagine that would just give us the same ending. So, third time's a charm. Excuse me. Well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> no, um. Again, total silence. Come to think of it, why am I even doing this at all? Do we even want to know what's down there? What if there was something truly dangerous looking at the bottom of this well? and I was simply stirring up a hornet's nest by calling out into it. The longer I dwelled on these questions, the more uneasy I became. I don't think I can bear it anymore. I suppose the best option now is to turn back, 
I don't feel confident enough to handle this on my own. And thus we simply leave. But, yeah. Huh? What was that? No, it couldn't be, could it? Yep. What the hell? Hmm. Good thing those nipples are not showing. <laughs> I don't know. Just, I'm just thinking about uh, YouTube and how, you know, it might ban me if I somehow accidentally show boobs. Uh, hello there, young lady. I take it you are the one calling for me from beyond the well. I suppose you could say that. Who or what are you exactly? Ah. Uh, where are my manners? I am Galatea, the mermaid of the well. You know, I just ha I just happened to claim this particular well right here. It is a pleasure to be acquainted with you. A mermaid? I take it you're not all too familiar with merfolk. No, I'm actually quite familiar with merfolk. You know, I watched that one movie from Disney. I've grown up around them, as a matter of fact. Oh, okay, well, actually, they just exist in this world, apparently. I just didn't expect to encounter one in my backyard, of all places. I understand. And your name is? Mm, you know, names have power. They do say you shouldn't give your name away so easily. But, um... Sure, I'll just say my name. Rosetta. Rosetta Halloway. Rada Rosetta, is it? I'm quite fond of it. A lovely name for a lovely lady is yourself. Oh, thank you, Miss Galtea. My pleasure. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Before my eyes was a mermaiden, with snow white hair and a complexion, or com comple complexion, complexion, just as pale, just as pale. I can certainly see where she gets her name from. But among all that white, what stood out in particular were those eyes, those piercing ebony eyes. Something about them felt eerie, uncanny even, almost like the eyes of a porcelain doll. I've seen many mermaids growing up along the coast of Winterport but never one so unsettling in appearance. Even so, I decide to continue speaking with her. It's too early for me to draw any definitive conclusions. Now then, Rosetta, what business do you have with me? I heard a strange noise coming from this well, so I decide to investigate. Dear, you must have overheard me then. I apologize, it's just, I, I just had like a, a really, <laughs> I just really had a hardcore gaming session. You know, it just made loud noises because I was really stuck on this one boss. You know, she's called Melania. No, um, <laughs> I, I, I apologize. It's just, it's been such a long time since I've had any form of contact with the world above. It can be lonely down in these deep waters with nothing but my own thoughts to keep me company. It's an absolutely miserable experience, I'll admit. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. You needn't apologize. None of this is your fault. In fact, I've grown a, quite accustomed to the solitude. But even so, it'd only be a matter of time before it would drive me mad. So, I like having someone to talk to every now and then. As such, I wish to cherish your company before I'll have to leave again. You know, there's a game that I played, <laughs> you know, kind of recently. What was it called again? Uh, I forget what it was called. It was that game that also included a mermaid, and let's just say it didn't really end on uh, ex exactly on a happy note, I feel like. <sighs> anyway, um... As such, I wish to cherish your company before I have to leave again. Would you kindly spare some of your time to that end? Oh, um, I suppose I have some time in my hands. Good, good. Let's take our time and get acquainted with one another, starting with you. I have been fascinated with the world above for as long as I can remember, and I've had more than enough time to think of plenty of questions to ask about. But for brevity's sake, I'll just stop, or I'll just stick with three. Is that all right? Go ahead. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Now, um, tell me a hobby of yours. What does one do to pass eternity? Oh, I don't know. We don't have eternity. Is the thing. Humans eventually die. Now, um, a few things. Uh, cooking, drawing, sewing. 
But one thing I've been particularly into is... Uh, I guess... Save. Um... Reading. Let's say reading. Reading. There's no better evening pastime than getting cozy in my reading chair by the fire and getting lost in a good book. Sometimes with some hot cocoa, sometimes while my cat, uh, Camellia, sleeps beside me. Some particular genres I'm into are romance, mystery, anything gothic, paranormal thrillers, and so on. My mother was a novelist for a time, and my father dabbled in poetry while he was away seafaring. So I suppose that's why I, that's part of why I love literature so much. Are there any particular stories you like? Well, if I had to pick one, I'd say... The Shadows Among Us. Among Us? Among Us? Sus? No, uh... <laughs> I don't know. The, the word is forever ruined for me, by the way. Uh, the Shadows Among Us, a novel by Shirley Blackwood. Oh, The Shadows Among Us. What's the story behind that one? It follows the paranormal detective Oliver Balfour, investigating a peculiar missing persons case. As in, a person goes missing every month, then returns the day after as a walking silhouette. Don't giving too much away, the story can get pretty intense and downright scary at times, but also have moments of tenderness. It also includes an imposter that you have to find out in the... No, anyway. For instance, like when Oliver comforts a distraught little girl whose mother was claimed by the phenomenon. You know, the title alone already had me intrigued, but your description makes me think this is a story I'll really end up enjoying. I'm thrilled to hear that, Galatea. If you're looking for more book recommendations, do look to me if you can. Does she read books? In the water, you know, say, uh, do you make waterproof books? Uh. Wow. Such valuable insight. I must thank you, Rosetta. Now, moving on from hobbies, I want to know more about where you live. You mean my hometown? Winterport? But of course. As mentioned before, this well is the only place I've known for a long time, so I want to know more about what's outside of it. Uh, well, Winterport, it's... I'd say it's a very lovely town to live in, with lots of nice people and magical beings like yourself. Actually, my house is located just off its outskirts. It takes about five minutes to walk there from there from here. I see. But I have no legs. I cannot walk. So, you know, it's really incredibly offensive. Uh, R Rosetta. <laughs> uh, what, about Winter uh, what about Winterport? What do you say is your favorite part of it? Honestly... I ever think one thing that most interests me, I have to say... I don't know, this part. This is, I feel like this is just like a date, you know, we're just asking about each other. Um, I guess, uh, the docks. Why not? The docks. It's about the mermaids. The docks. Winterport is widely known for its fishing and cruising industries. When I was younger, my father used to captain a cruise ship known as the Oceanus. And my mother would sometimes take me to a tour around on it. I'd sometimes look out of one of the ship's windows and catch glimpses of various sea creatures, including merfolk. Merfolk? Like me? I would presume, yes. Speaking of which, Winterport has a very tight but delicate relationship with the Sea King. As long as they pay the proper tribute and respect the balance of the seas, the town is free to do so, uh, to, to do as they please in his domain. If that bond were ever to be broken, then we'll get a bad ending in this visual novel. I mean, no. Uh, but I digress. You seem to be very fond of the sea. My mother actually used to be a mermaid. That is before she gave up her tail to marry my father. Is that how it works? You just do that? You just, just take your tail off? Is that so? So it is. So, based on that information, that would technically make me the Sea King's granddaughter. I guess that would make you some form of royalty. I, I never thought of it like that. I suppose that would make sense, given the circumstances. Well then, I believe this brings us to our last question. This one might be a bit more personal, if that's fine. No worries, Galatea. What do you wish to ask? It's about your loved ones. My loved ones? I apologize for not mentioning this earlier, but to put it simply, I don't exactly have what one would call a family. Not anymore, at least. I don't have any friends, either. The ones I love, they all abandoned me long ago, leaving me in this well to die alone. Oh, Galatea, that sounds terrible. How could anyone think to do something so cruel? I wonder the same thing every day. But you, dear, you're not like them. Were you there taking time to speak with me, to answer my questions despite how I may appear, you know, and totally not, like, using this information to steal your identity or anything, and, like, 
you know, disguise myself as you and ruin your life. I don't know. I, don't know. I feel maybe that I could be completely off the mark, but like, I just feel like these questions are just like, it's like the questions that, um, like a website asks you, you know, like the scam you or something. Uh, it shows that you really care and I'm thankful of that. I mean it. I truly am thankful. I'm happy to have been so helpful to you, Galatea. Now, about my question. <clears throat> if there was anyone in your life that you love most, anyone at all, who would you say that was? So I totally won't kill them. I mean, what? Goodness, I have so many loved ones, so that may actually be a bit trickier for me to answer. But if I had to pick someone, that would be... I don't know. My parents? My cats? My boyfriend? Um... My cat. I don't know. I choose cat. The three eyes. My cat, Camellia. She's somewhat of a nag, but also a true sweetheart, and my greatest uh, confident. Confident? Confident? Really? She's so cute and her fur is so soft and fluffy, I can't help but want to pet her whenever she sleeps next to me. I got her when she was a weekend, and I've cherished her with all my being ever since. She's practically like a sister to me. Ah, Camellia certainly sounds like a cute cat name. How old is she now? Also, is, there, is it just me? I noticed some little popping. I don't think it's my microphone. I feel like it's the, the game. I don't know. That's kind of like annoying actually. I don't know how... I, I could turn it off, but I don't want to do that. Mm, I'm not sure. Anyway, maybe it's not so bad. Now, how old is she now? Well, she just turned seven last week actually. So you've been together for some time then? We've been through thick and thin together. I can't imagine life without her, in fact. With Camellia by my side, I know I'm gonna be alright no matter what happens. And I'm sure that she feels the same about her loving, caring owner. I don't see why not. I don't know, maybe it's just my end. Oh. It could just also be my... Uh... My IEMs, you know? My earbuds, basically. Making like a weird cracking noise. I don't know. And with that, I believe I have all the answers I need. Thank you again for choosing to speak with me, Rosetta. From what you told me, I can tell that the world you live in is a truly wonderful and interesting one. I got no legs of my own, being a mermaid, but I'm grateful nonetheless I've gotten to hear your descriptions of it. It's great news, Galatea. Oh, it's such a shame I can't seem to help you leave that well you're in. I'd love to show you around Winterport, introduce you to all the wonderful wo folk within it. Huh. I was so caught up in a conversation I forgot to mention. There is, in fact, a way that I could potentially leave, and it just so happens you have the exit key. Exit key? I don't understand. What exactly do you mean by that? Your legs. What about them? <laughs> what about my legs? For me to leave this well would require that I have a pair of human legs. Legs such as yours. I waited far too long for the opportunity of freedom and your arrival. Said opportunity seems to have finally fallen into my hands. Rosetta. What I ask of you is this. Take my tail and give me your legs so they may escape this hell and experience the human world for myself. How about I just carry you though? Can I just put you in like a little fish tank? With like a little like cart, you know, and just push you towards the ocean? Can you just do that? No? So in other words, you want me to switch places with you. The time between you and me. All the dialogue we've exchanged thus far. All the compassion you've shown me. You're so willing to share your knowledge with me to let me experience your lovely town through your words. Surely this small favor would be too much for you to accept. I don't... Your legs, dear. Give them to me. Give. Me. Your. Legs. But, surely there are better ways to help you, right? The Sea King, my grandfather, uh, perhaps I can talk to him, I can convince him to give you legs. Like he did with my mother. I'm afraid that won't work, Rosetta. This well's magic holds me captive. It has a very, specific, very, very specific set of condi uh, conditions that can't be broken. It's unfortunate to say, but there's no other way for me to leave. There isn't. No, there isn't. You have to be the one to make the decision. Good lord, what have I gotten myself into? Perhaps I was right to being suspicious of the well after all. Sounds got to I made within it. For asking all those questions. It was all just an elaborate setup to trap me? For what purpose? How do I know she's even telling the truth? She seems so kind from the time I've spoken of her, and what she says is true, 
and I can only imagine how much pain her isolation brought her. But would it really be worth it to give up my legs? My life? Just for someone I've known only for a day. Huh. I guess it can't be helped. I have to make a choice now. Either give my legs to Gatea or leave her behind in the well. I have to really think this one through, though. Once I make my decision, there may very well be no going back. I save my game. I use the power of time travel. Uh, sure. What's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? We're just gonna live in this well forever. You know, just suddenly just swap our legs, and now we just have to live in this magical well prison forever. Don't worry about it. Easy. <laughs> sure, why not? Let's give it to a complete stranger. Just like, you know, just guilt tripping me and all that. When I was young, my parents told me to help others whenever possible. I read various stories about heroes saving others whenever they were in danger. A brave knight slaying demons and protecting their loved ones from evil. To be honest, I've, I've always wanted to be a good person. To be a heroine that people could rely on and look up to. I don't like seeing others in pain, and I feel like a bad person leaving them to suffer. This isn't even worth being called a sacrifice, I don't think. It's quite laughable, really. I know where I would be heading towards my death right now, and yet I still accepted her offer, because I felt like I was doing a good deed. Am I doing this because she was being genuine in her words? Or am I just being blinded by my sense of altruism? It's called a savior complex? Anyway, regardless of the truth, I've already made my decision. Even if I were to die from this, if my death results in improvement in many lives, then at least it won't be in vain. Um, many lives? <laughs> More like her life, but... <laughs> I'm so glad we could come to an agreement, little lamb. Now, allow me to take those off your hands. Or should I say feet? <laughs> it was then that I was seized by several black hands emerging from the well. Their touches felt cold and wet and their grasp felt almost firm as they gradually brought me into the water. This honestly should have been terrifying, yet I was unafraid. Calm, even. As I was being dragged into the watery abyss, I thought about my past. About my past decision. You know, what led me to this uh, situation? I thought about my garden, my book collection, my cafe days with Christopher. As I slowly lost consciousness, I thought about my parents, Camellia, the Teramisu siblings, and everyone I and everything that I'd come to care for by that point. I thought about Galatea and the conversation I had with her. Actually, I don't think I've ever seen Galatea at all since I agreed to give my legs to her. Perhaps she already left and I just didn't notice. At least that's what I chose to believe. As with weird hands just, just rip off the legs, by the way. I hope that none of my loved ones are around to watch me right now. I don't want them to feel hurt by my disappearance. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Kind of like. It's kind of like, uh, what do you call it? It's like a corking the. Well, I don't know what you call it. Like, tying up the legs, I guess. To turn into like a mermaid tail. <sighs> anyway. Uh, Barbara? Oh, it looks like there's someone at the door. Hopefully they brought some good news along with them. Uh, give me a moment, please. I'll be right with you. Ah, Prince Heterosera. Heterosera? Heterosera? Heterosera. A slip for side eyes, as always. A good afternoon, Mrs. Holloway. I uh, hope you don't mind me coming over here so suddenly. Oh, not at all, sweetheart. Come, make yourself at home. Thank you, ma'am. Eugene, we have company. Alright. Uh, I guess that's Chris? Okay, so these are the parents. That's, okay, I guess we're changing POVs. I'm assuming. Christopher is a uh, moth boy? Is that, is that what it is? I don't know. Uh, uh, hi, Christopher. Good to see you, young, young lad. It's good to see you also, Mr. Holloway. So, what brings ye to our humble abode? You know, is he talking like a pirate? It's like, Arr! 
So what brings you to our humble abode? You know, apparently he uh, was a seafaring captain, right, or something? Uh, um, I wanted to ask about your daughter. Rosetta, I mean. What about her? I wanted to know if either of you knew where she went lately. I've had a particular question in my mind recently, so I went to her house and let her know how I was feeling. But she wasn't anywhere to be found. Nobody asked or knew where she was either. Not even her pet cat. Uh, apparently you can ask the cat. I'm, I'm assuming the cat speaks, you know? It has three eyes. It could probably speak, you know, in this world of magic, I guess. I figured that you two would have some idea, so that's why I'm here now. Oh dear. Oh dear, sweet Christopher. I'm so sorry. What? Miss... Mrs. Uh, Holloway, what does that mean? Lad, let me break the news to you in the nicest possible way I can think of. You see, Rosetta's, uh, Rosetta's been declared missing for several days now. We ain't seen or heard anything of her since the 12th. Nobody has. We've done everything in our power to locate her. We've spoken to my mother, my father, my siblings, Eugene's mother, Camellia, the Wood Support Investigation Department, just about every local we could think of. I recall even the Terramisu household got involved at one point. But alas, our search party has turned up nothing. Since you came here to ask for her whereabouts, I take it the information that hadn't yet reached the fair folk over in Dopterra. Um, I don't think so. I see. Well, if either of you need me, I'll be in my back garden trying to cool my head. I believe the stress is finally starting to get to me. Take all the time you need, Bobby. This whole thing's been hard on all of us. Arr. <laughs> I don't know, I... I'm in a pirate voice. Arr. 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 Arr, Arr you mateys. So, or so, rather, he's saying that. So, yes, Mr. Holloway. You said something earlier about wanting to ask Rosetta a question, correct? Yes, I did say that. Alrighty, then. Well, I don't mean to be nosy and all, but would you be okay with telling me what exactly this has been bothering you? I suppose I can do that. Go on, then. Well, I... No worries if you can't find the words right away. I know that part tends to trouble you. I want to ask Rosetta for her hand in marriage. Hmm. How old are these people? <laughs> well, what's that? You want to marry the girl? Yes, sir. I mean, we certainly like each other, and we've been a couple for about five or six years now. But we've known each other for about 20-ish years at this point. Okay, so they're at least 20. <laughs> She's nice and caring and sweet, and... She's got a cute face, and I love her cooking. I like the way she laughs. She always wears the prettiest outfits, and we share a lot of the same hobbies. She's really passionate, and... Uh, slow down there, boy. I think I get what you're trying to say. Sorry, I just... Anyway, I really want to spend the rest of my life with her, and I was wondering if she'd be okay with, uh, with being my wife. Uh, you know, just don't, like, show, like, bright lights, you know, next to him, and he'll be fine. Uh, w well, certainly you have my support. You're a brave fellow who's willing to give his all to make his sweetheart happy, and I like that. Reminds me of my younger self, actually. Should we find her alive, I'm sure you make the finest husband Rosetta could ever have. You know, assuming she's not dead and like a corpse somewhere, you got killed by a serial killer, you know? I mean, well, the audience, as the, as the, yeah, we know, she's not exactly dead, I guess, but, you know. I appreciate your blessing. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Don't mention it. I'm Eugene. You remember there being a water well in the back garden? A water well? I don't remember having no well installed back there. What is... Honey, I... I think you should come here and see this. Huh? What is it, Barbie? What's going on? Mr. Halloway, what's happening? Is everything okay with Mrs. Halloway? A mermaid? I don't get it. What's one doing in a well of all places? No, Eugene, it's not like... Just that. This mermaid. The mermaid in the well. It looks... Just like... Dear God, you're right. The face, the hair, the heart-shaped birthmark on her lower back. Yet I can't see a sp single speck of light in her eyes. Mother, father, why are you crying? No, it cannot be. I refuse to believe it. Eugene, please. Please tell me it isn't so. I'm... I don't know what else to tell you, Barbie. I... Mrs. Holloway, are you okay? You sound incredibly upset. Christopher, don't come over here. I beg you, please don't. For your own sake. Bobby, I guess you don't want the lad to be hurt and all, but 
I don't think keeping this from him is going to do any good. What? Keep what from me? What do you mean? Christopher, is that you I see? No way. Oh, Christopher. My sweet little angel. I'm so glad you're here. Tell me, my love. Do you have any idea how long I've been waiting for this very moment? R Rosetta. Okay. Bad ending, of course. Legs to one, mind to none. Hmm. I, I guess that might also, maybe that implied that uh, when she swapped places with Galatea, I guess, uh, she might have been isolated in that well. Kind of like, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, I actually don't know what the word for it is. A like time dilation, maybe? You know, kind of like the hyperbolic time chamber in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> you know, Like, maybe her, she was actually stuck in that well for longer than we think. And eventually, she went crazy, I guess. Kind of similar to Galatea, I guess. I mean, other than that, I mean, she looks fine. Again, can we just carry her? I mean, I guess not. I'm assuming the well is magical, so you can't just leave. But, you know, it just feels like, it just feels like, you know, it's not so bad. You know, just like move her and just put her in like a little fish tank. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, there you go. That's what happens when you just trade legs to a random mermaid that you met like for like a few minutes. It's a bad idea, you know? Don't trust strangers. Let's head back here. So this is when Galatea was asking for our legs again. This time, Daga Kotoaru. I'm sorry, Galatea, but the answer will have to be no. What? What? We're having so much fun together, and yet you refuse to do this one favor for me. <sighs> Galatea, listen. Of course I enjoyed our time together, and if we met under different circumstances, I'm sure we could have had an absolutely fantastic friendship. But as it stands, if your freedom comes at a cost of everything I've worked to achieve over the years, my friends, my family, my cat, my books, my garden, my home, my dearest, my life, my soul, my very being, then I'm sorry, but the cost is one I'm unable to cover. And we talked like for like 12 minutes. How dare you not give him your legs? How could you? How could you stand to be this heartless? To treat me like garbage when I've been nothing but nice to you all this time. You. You don't mean that, surely. Galatea, please understand. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'd love to help you if I could, I really would. But as selfish as it may sound, I cannot bring myself to make such a major sacrifice for someone I've hardly known. I hope you understand. Please forgive me. Mm. <laughs> okay, just goes back into the well. How unpleasant. And to think that my chance was finally within my grasp. I got this close to finally being rid of this rotten vessel. Only for the opportunity to be lost at the last moment. That girl. It's truly a shame she isn't as foolish as she appeared to be. With a beautiful face like hers. She very well would have made a fine replacement for Galatea. Where did I go wrong? My methodology worked perfectly thus far. I thought I'd be no different here. And yet, I can't take it anymore. The hunger, this hunger of mine has eaten away the very last of my patience. I've come too far to abandon everything now. This sadly leaves me with only one option. I can't, if I can't have my way, then... Then I'll just take it by force. Bugger! <laughs> bugger! I feel like it's a very British thing. Is it British to say bugger? I can't remember. I think it's very British. I, I guess we're in Britain. I don't know. Bugger! Yeah? Camellia? Uh, Rosetta! Rosetta, can you hear me? I'm behind you! Yes, Camellia, I can hear you fine. Then what are you still doing standing there? Hurry and make a run for her, Rosetta! Quick, into the house! Okay, I'm coming. At Camellia's prompting, I ran as fast as I could to my house's back door, with black hands giving chase behind me. You're almost there, keep going! I'm going as fast as I can. Once inside, I rushed to lock and barricade every door and window I could. I was to make sure to close all the curtains for good measure. 
and could vaguely hear loud banging noises outside the house as the heads desperately try to find an entrance. I feel so afraid right now. What did I do wrong? What do I do to make it right? It's all my fault. I shouldn't have rejected Galatea like that. I should have told her yes. I should have. I... Good work, Rosetta. I had to hold him out for a while. You could have gotten seriously hurt if I, count I hadn't called for you back there. We're out of the woods for now. It won't be long until those demonic hands manage to find a way inside. You know, just typical demonic hands. Yeah. Rosetta? Rosetta, are you alright? I'm such a fool. I could have let this happen. How could I let this weird mermaid, you know, try to kill me with like, uh, like, you know, multiple shadow hands, I guess. Uh, how could I have been so stupid to let this, as to let this nightmare come to fruition? I don't think I can ever forgive myself for this terrible mistake. Oh, Rosetta. Don't say that about yourself, please. You're better than you think. If only I had been so naive. A bit more cowardly, a bit meeker. No. If that had been the opposite, then I would have lived a happy, fulfilling life. I wouldn't have to die like this. Wait. There, there, dear. Cry as much as you need to. You have every right to feel the sadness you do now. Just know that I'm here for you. You. Amelia? What is it? I'm a good person, right? Yes, Rosetta, you're a good person. You might not always make the best of decisions, but we all tend to do that sometimes. Even the great geniuses of this world are immune to this fact. What ultimately matters is how you handle your mistakes and that you strive to better yourself as a result of those mistakes. You know, it's kind of weird, like, we're having, like, a moral thing, you know, moral of the story kind of thing. But, like, we didn't actually do anything wrong, though. I don't know. Like, I feel like this would be more impactful if she, I don't know, attacked the mermaid or something. She didn't literally do anything. She just, just said no and walked away. That's, like, literally anyone would do that, actually. I don't know. Anyway. So what you're saying is that there's still a chance to fix that? Why is she assuming she made this in the first place? How would you predict the, the giant shadow hands, <laughs> you know? That makes no sense to me. Anyway, whatever. I don't know. Perchance. As long as we stay close, then. We wasted too much time here. If we're to get out of this situation alive, we need to act quickly. The kitchen's the next room over. There's surely something there that could help. Let's go. You know, I wonder if uh, our decision earlier affect would have affected that scene actually, because I remember how like Galatea asked like, "Well, what's your most loved person or whatever?" I chose the cat, so like maybe that's why the cat is appearing. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, no, this won't do. This is no good either. Camelia and I desperately searched the kitchen for something, anything that could help defend ourselves against the approaching threat. We searched high and low, and from the cupboards to the drawers to the pantry. In our painstaking efforts, we eventually came across. Uh, a knife, <laughs> you know, a classic knife, or a bag of salt. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know how would a bag of salt help us, but maybe she's in a well, so that's why she can't get out of the well because can't be near the ocean or something. I'm not sure. I mean, a knife is the obvious choice, I guess. But we're gonna take the knife. We're gonna we're gonna stab this bitch. <laughs> anyway, I quickly reach for the large knife in my knife drawer. The blade glistened softly as I examined it in the life. In the light, rather. Uh, salt wards demons? Uh, maybe. I mean, depends on the demon, you know? I don't know. It's not a lot, and I doubt it'll be much help against an army of rapidly extending arms, but I suppose it's worth a try. You know, it's just, you just gotta, gotta activate your anime moves. You gotta, like, hi-yah, hua, hua, you know? Just stab all the hands. And just like clockwork, a pair of arms broke through one of the kitchen windows. Another three burst into the living room ceiling. Single-minded in their goal, the arms all rushed towards me like a pack of ravenous wolves. And at that moment, I knew what I had to do. I had to activate my Bankai. My super anime move. My Kamehameha Spirit Bomb Ninjutsu um, One Punch Man Super Power Duper Attack. I don't know, anyway. <laughs> With the kitchen knife in hand, I, I, I went on the attack. Hiya! I wildly swung and stabbed my knife into near his arms, while Camellia attacked some of the others with her teeth and claws. One, two, 
one, two, and threw it through the kitchen blade with snicker snack as the large black arm swarmed us from all directions. It looks like they're slowing down finally. That's good to hear. Now we just need to. Yo. What the? No. 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 Can't be serious. How have these bloody arms still not exhausted themselves? Even so, we did our best to fight tooth and nail until an opportunity opened up, up or opened up for us to escape. But that opportunity never came. The arms kept coming in such a way that it became not impossible to fend them off. Before we had any proper time to react, we were completely overpowered. I struggled to break free from the hands' grasp as my vision began to blur. The arms had become so numerous by then that they almost seemed to merge with one another. I was beginning to see much more dark than light too. Seda? Where are you? Camellia? Camellia, is that you? Rosetta, don't worry. I'll find you. I'm right here, Camellia. Please help me. Don't let them take me, I beg you. Sorry, Rosetta. Who did... Uh, failed you. Camellia, no. <sighs> no, you didn't fail me. Please stay with me. I don't want to die. I don't want to be alone. Come to me, Camellia. Please. Please. Well, that was the last thing I remember, shouting before everything went black. And then got consumed by the hands. I'm assuming also... Well, I guess we'll see. When I opened my eyes again, I found myself in the depths of a black ocean. Demons or slugs? I don't know about that. Uh, anyway. I thought it was snails. I mean, was it snails that you put salt on? Anyway. Well, I guess the same thing. Uh, there's no way to tell up from down, nor the amount of time I spent in this place. I looked around, but it didn't see anyone or anything else near me. No possible exits, no signs of Camellia. I couldn't find the damn knife. Part of me wanted to scream for help, but my body felt incredibly heavy and tired. I couldn't even bring myself to wiggle my digits. I felt several of those hands grabbing hold of my arms and legs, but I remained motionless still. I no longer had the strength to fight back, and my senses were fading fast. It was only a matter of time before I succumbed to unconsciousness. I'm so tired. So very tired. Tired of running. Tired of fighting. Tired of fearing over of, of my life. Perhaps if I closed my eyes and let myself drift off for a bit, then everything would eventually turn out fine. After all I've been through, I wanted nothing more than to sleep. Yes, sleeping would be the easiest thing for me to do right now. If nothing else... I can at least find solace in knowing that this nightmare will eventually end. Soon. Very soon. It'll all be over. I don't have to worry about anything anymore. The end. It's right within my grasp. I can see it now. Here it comes. Alright. And then we just freaking get murdered by a bunch of tentacle hands. Good. <laughs> Alright, good. Um, uh, Maybe your, your chat is delayed because of your name? I don't know, maybe? I don't know, yeah, I've seen the- I've seen the chat, like, kind of delays, kind of like, it fluctuates for some reason. I, I- I don't know if you can test that out, maybe you could change your name. I mean, I, I don't even can read your name. Your name is like a emoji. You should have, like, just a, a normal name, maybe. I don't know, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, but yeah, turns out, you know, our, uh, our dexterity, you know, isn't high enough to handle a bunch of tentacles. With our knife. We're not strong enough. Oh well. Alright. Okay. Well, as, uncon uh, as unconventional as it is, maybe we should try some salt. You know? Maybe this will actually work. Let's see. The power of salt. Sea salt? Now, what exactly do you plan on doing with that bag, Rosetta? I read before in the paper that salt can be used to ward off evil spirits. So, I figured that if I throw some salt, some of the salt at the hands, they'll scatter and dissipate. Well, interesting strategy. But, are you certain you know what you're doing? I'm not too confident either, but salt does, uh, does me good in the garden and the kitchen. Surely you won't let me down here. Alright, Rosetta. I believe in you. And just like clockwork, a pair of arms broke through one of the kitchen windows. Another three burst into the living room ceiling. Single mind the goal, arms all rushed towards me. At that moment, I knew what I had to do. I used the power of salt. Hiya! 
I grab a handful of salt and toss it at the few uh, uh, at a few of the arms. As I expected, the arms began recoiling as though in pain before they retreated. I toss more salt at the remaining arms. They all react the same way. Rosetta, it's working. My hands are scattering just as you said. Yes, see, I knew it would work. No time for celebration just yet, however. Quickly to the garden. With a bag of salt under my arm, I rush alongside Camellia towards the strange well on the back. Once we got close enough, a familiar figure emerged from the black water inside. And there she is. It was Galatelia. No, rather, it was a half decayed, uh, Pison? 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 I'm not gonna say that word, to be honest. Pison shell, uh, made to resemble a woman who presumably bore that name. Okay, so it's revealed, yeah, she, Galatelia was never real. It was just a corpse. It was like a puppet, you know? Even at a distance, the stench of rotting flesh was incredibly potent, so much so that it nearly gave my eyes, or made my eyes water. I could hear a voice coming from the mermaid's uh, mouth, but her lips were barely moving. Hello again, little lamb. Not only the appearance, but the voice was also much different from before. It sounded slower, breathier, more like two voices speaking in almost perfect unison, one noticeably lower than the other. Well, can't really do that at the moment, you know, I can't, I can't get some kind of voice filter. Uh, as the voice continued, the murmur began making clumsy, erratic gestures like a poorly manipulated marionette. Now, lamb, I believe we might have had a rough start, don't you think? Come now, don't give me that look. I would love nothing more than to right the wrongs between us, you see. Now, tell you, listen to me. This has to stop. You're being completely unreasonable right now. You know, it's like you're trying to kill me with your many arms, you know? Don't you, don't you know that's just rude? Ah, uh, it would seem I've made you upset. How foolish of me. But surely we could work something out. Yes. If you would just try to understand me. Understand me. Then I'm sure a beautiful friendship could blossom between us. Please, just put the salt bag down and release me from the well. That's all I ask of you. Goodness, this abomination simply can't take a hint, can it? Let's finish it off, Rosetta. Ah, this must be your kitten. She looks absolutely adorable and fluffy. Keep your filthy Ron hands away from my camellia. Hiya! Get wrecked. Without thinking, I retaliated with another handful of salt to the mermaid's face, causing it to emit a terrible shriek of pain. I stuff with a gas as I look on in horror at what I've done. Oh. Oh dear. I'm sorry, Gauthier, I didn't mean to. <laughs> you. You wretched thing. I tried to be nice to you. I played along with your little game, and this is the thanks I get in return. Is that how little consideration you have for your peers? You know, I'm just gonna gaslight you to the very end. Please, Gauthier, I swear it was an accident. I wasn't thinking. It was an unconscious reflex. I... You... Uh, enough of this frivolous masquerade. I need to feed now. Several more hands emerged within the mermaid, causing its hollow body to tear. A truly disgusting display. Thank goodness Camellia was nearby to help me stay grounded. I'm not sure what would have happened to me otherwise. But even so, nothing could prepare me for the sight that followed. Okay. It's like an SCP. <laughs> I see now. How did I not notice it earlier? This is no ordinary stone well, but a malicious entity taking the form of one. I can see the malice in its crimson eyes as it's directed its gaze at me. So this entity's strategy was to lure unwitting prey under the guise of a mermaid trapped in the well. With the mermaid in question apparently being a sort of vessel made out of its previous victim. Speaking through the vessel, it hold conversations and act friendly with the prey to sadly lower the gra uh, their guard. When certain conditions were met, the ending would put pull the victim into its maw and consume them. You know, you just gonna explain all this by the way? It's kind of like an anime, you know? It's like, whenever, like, the sh protagonist does, like, a new move, like, like in JoJo or whatever, and then, like, there's, like, a th third party, like, literally explaining everything. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if we need that explanation, really. Anyway, uh, but what's circuit's good is that the would pull the victim into its maw and consume them. I mean, it's kind of already explained on the other endings, you know? I guess maybe if we got this ending first, maybe you would an explanation, but I don't know. I feel like some things are left. Um, you know, to uh, to your imagination. But anyway, 
But after an unknown period, the entity would fashion the remains to a new vessel and began feeding or begin the feeding cycle anew. If my theory is true, then I suppose it's up to me to end the cycle once and for all. My, my. You sure do love making things more difficult than they need to be, don't you? Are you truly that obstinate that you can't even bring yourself to follow the simplest of instructions? Don't you dare talk down to me, you miserable pile of horseshit! <laughs> Do you truly believe that I'll let you get away with this? Alright. I haven't properly introduced myself. I suppose now would be a good time with my dearest Galatea being out of commission at the moment. You may call me... Piggy... Uh... How do you say that actually? Pigamillion? Pigmalion. Pigmalion. Pig... Pigmalion. 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 You may call me Pygmalion. I believe I'm what you homo sapiens would call a demon. Please to meet your acquaintance. Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. If you think I'm just going to continue playing along with your charade at this point, then you're sorely mistaken. <laughs> Goodness, you're a feisty little lamb, aren't you? <laughs> you know, I could simply grab you and drag you down my gullet right this second. Bring about your demise right here and now, before you even have the time to feel any form of regret or fear. That opportunity is most definitely available to me, and on any other day, I'd be more than happy to take it. But you know what? I've grown quite fond of you, child. Your pretty face and a oh-so-lovely voice. So the time we spent together has become an earnest wish of mine to make you my companion and to satisfy your every worldly desire. After all, aren't friends supposed to help each other to want each other's happiness? Shut up. As such, I've decided to extend a compassionate hand and not take your opposition towards me for the insult that it is. This is your last chance to reconsider your behavior, and why would we? And this is when I take out my shotgun. You know, isn't there such a thing actually? There's such a thing as a salt shotgun. That's like a thing you can buy. You know, it's like a shotgun filled with salt. It's, it's apparently people use it to, to kill insects. <laughs> anyway, um, either you forfeit your life willingly, or I tear it out of your hands. What will you do, Lamb? What will you do, Rosetta? Rosetta, say something. Do something. Anything. Please. Listen to the feline lamb. There's only so long I'm willing to wait for your answer. I'm incredibly famished, you see. And it's already well past my dinner time. Whatever you're thinking of right now, it better be worth my waiting. Beings like you are vile and wretched. Toying with people's emotions, luring them in with a false kindness, pretending to be their fans until... Be able to use it for your own selfish purposes. As you may know, Winterport is filled with the brim of people who love me. People who truly care for me and support my passions without any hidden motives unlike you. I'm not about to turn my back on those people just so you can satisfy your twisted hunger. You. Dare speak to me with such insolence. Even despite my warnings. My generosity. There are many types of fair folk in this world. Some of them kind and others cruel. But you? Your brand of awful greatly exceeds that of the latter category. For you to commit such atrocious acts against innocent humans, that was so much of a sliver of remorse. Monstrosities like you deserve to be burned, until none, not even ashes remain. Okay, and then we poured this out. Okay. You know, I, I was just wondering why Pygmalion even bothered seeing like, Oh, uh -huh, I've got you. I'm going to kill you now. Even though... It was such that would, it was at such a disadvantage in the first place, though. <laughs> you know, so it was like, like I don't know. I felt the scene was a little bit uh, less impactful or less intimidating because we had the salt in the first place. Like it would be more. I don't know. This is just a small complaint. <laughs> it was just a small thing, but like I felt it, it, the scene would be much more um, uh, cooler if uh, she didn't have the salt, you know, in the first place. Like, for some reason, she was disarmed. And then she, you know, was uh, cornered before, you know, then getting the salt and then, you know, pouring the salt. But anyway, that's just me, I guess. Um, uh, what's wrong, you wretched thing? Didn't you say you were hungry? This should be more than enough to satisfy you then. 
Go on, guzz it down to your filthy heart's content. Blah, blah, blah. Nah, too much salt. I don't like it. <laughs> a demon little constantly gurgles of agony as I pour the remaining bits of salt into its maw. As I did so, it began to slowly melt into a black sludge. Meanwhile, Camilla scratched the demon's eyes, causing it further pain. <laughs> just to add, hey, just to add salt to the injury. But um, anyway. there. This ought to teach you some manners, young man. The distress noises the well emitted were sickening, yet I continued to pour the salt from the bag. More and 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 more salt. All the salt in the world, more salty than an Overwatch lobby. Finally, after some time, the salt had run out. And all that was left of the demon was a pile of black sludge. It was a revolting yet relieving sight to behold. It's over. It's finally over. You did it, Rosetta. You poured salt on <laughs> like a demonic well. You did it. I suppose I did, didn't I? Seems like it was good to buy that third salt bag after all. Guess so. Wait. Hold on. I spot something in that sludge pile. Something white. Allow me to dig it up. Um, Camille, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Why do you say that, Rosetta? McMillian's been neutralized now. What harm could he possibly do as a pile of black goo? Um, well, you see, the thing is... Okay, <laughs> it's just a skeleton. Is that, is that Galatelia? Or, yeah, what's her name? Gal Galatelia? Yeah, uh, uh, oh dear. What? What? Bones? But, if those came from that pile of sludge, then that could only mean... Those remain silent for a few moments as the cold realization of what exactly we witnessed has settled in. That poor lady. Was that damn well done? After around two minutes, I was the one to break the silence. I... I believe I have a phone call to make. Alright then, you go ahead on that. I'll be following you s shortly. We gotta call the coroner, you know? Gotta call the, uh... Funeral director. Uh, thank you for calling the Winterport Investigation Department. What seems to be the issue? Hello, this is Rosetta Halloway. You know, there's like a demonic well that tried to kill me and everything, and I pour some salt into it. Um, there's also a murder victim that's in my back garden now. Or at least, you know, the remains of her anyway. I'm calling to report an, an incident that occurred at my place of residence. Alrighty, Miss Halloway, I hear you loud and clear. Now, could you perhaps elaborate on said incident as in much detail as possible? I'll try my best. Apologies if my speech is a bit disorganized. I'm still rather shaken up by it all. It's fine, I understand. Take your time. Thank you, sir. Now, where do I start? I then went ahead and explained to the operator everything that had occurred that day. I told him of the encounter with Galatea, of the uh, demonic well of the black hands, of the bones we found in the sludge. I really adore how reassuring that young man sounded. I could feel the tension in me melt away as, uh, as soon as I spoke with him. He then sent me an investigator's team to my house to clean up the aftermath. A few more lengthy interrogations later, the bones were identified and given a proper burial. My house needed extensive repairs due to all the damage that they had caused, but my parents were kind enough to let me and Camilla stay with them until everything had been fixed. To be honest, it was rather nostalgic sleeping in my old room after so long. Sure, it had been converted to a guest bedroom after I moved out, but it still managed to make me feel like I was a young girl again. Some days since in my stay, Christopher had come over, carrying a very special question in his heart. A question that would change my life forever. And then they got married. You know, that, that, uh, you know, you know, looking back at all the, uh, endings and everything, I guess, uh, yeah, the bad ending where she traded her legs, by the way, I guess at that time, um, I, I guess that meaning, you know, from that ending means she died, so, turns out, yeah, if you make a deal with the well, you're just a corpse, so, anyway, uh, some months later, and he were in the present, new way to my beloved mom. So, I hope this marks the end of that uh, heart-pounding tale, Doki Doki. Knowing that journey eventful will be a grave understatement in my opinion. Also, Cyclops? Oh, thank the stars you and Camila made it all right. I wouldn't know what I'd do without either of you around. I, it's no trouble at all, really. You might as well come out unscathed, at least. On another note, thank you again for agreeing to do catering for the event. Of course, anything to help a friend. I didn't let my brother down when I helped out at his wedding, so of course I won't let you down either. Uh, she married the cat? <laughs> no, she didn't marry the cat. She married the, the moth boy. I don't know if you heard earlier. But, uh, the, the Christopher, you know, was introduced a little bit earlier in my playthrough. You know, in the bad ending, actually. Anyway. 
Uh, plus, weddings are good for business. So many guests with hungry tummies to feed. I suppose. Are you still upset over the whole thing, Galatea? Somewhat, yes. Knowing that for all that time, I've been speaking with a puppet maid to lure me to my demise. It sort of left a bitter taste in my mouth. I still wish I could save that lady, spared her from the face she'd been dealt with. Was that a day we talked about this? <laughs> Being dressed up cat. Well, it's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate reality, but the fact uh, remains that there are some people that are simply beyond saving. That white hair girl was one such person by the looks of it. But there ain't no need to beat yourself up over it. Our fate has nothing to do with you, sweetheart. Arguably, by stopping that dashly Pygmalion in his tracks, you save countless lives from suffering the same fate. Not a bad bargain, methinks. My father, you and mother have always given such comforting advice. Hey, can I say something too? I don't see why you can't. It's your wedding, after all. Thank you. <clears throat> Rosetta might not seem like it at times, but you do much more good for us than you think. For example, ever since we met back when I was a wee larva, <laughs> a larva, Oh, wonder what he looked like when he was a larva. I'd be, be able to become much more open about my thoughts and feelings. I was too focused on being good heir to the Doptera throne when I was younger, and I never let myself be true because of it. But thanks to you, I don't have to bother myself up anymore. I can let myself be soft, uh, because of you. Be soft? I'm not the best of words and sometimes say things without thinking about it. But I'm very glad to have met you, and I'm glad that I, I get to have you as my wife. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so happy right now. Y'all make me so happy. I love you all dearly. Uh, we love you too, Rosetta. You've been such a bright spot in our lives, and we're glad to have been one in yours. And uh, Ariel? Oh, a uh, uh, brother, I'm assuming? Hello? What seems to be going on? Why, hello to you, Fratto No One. We're just having a nice conversation with our blushing bl uh, bride here. Sounds absolutely lovely. I must once again congratulate Miss Rosetta and Prince Christopher on their engagement. Oh, thank you, Ariel. I'm very pleased, Mr. Termisu. You're very welcome. Oh, okay. The, the, they were, I guess, briefly mentioned. Yeah, the Teramisu family, whatever. Teramisu. Uh, yeah, yeah, young love is such a beautiful thing, is it not? It takes me back when I first met my own blushing bride, Dolores. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, Lurita Karimiya, how I love you so. Um, Ariel, is there something particular you wish to say? Hmm? Oh, yes. I actually came over this land one now that the cameraman's finished preparations for the wedding photos. Ah, brava. Perfect timing. We'll be waiting for you all in the West Wing once you're ready. Uh, aye, aye, Ariel. Follow along, everyone. We're coming. Right. Okay, there you go. Just a little uh, photo at the end. Uh, who's that? Who's this? The It's the thing from the Adams family. Except blonde. Um... Right? So, or is it, was it the thing, or was it called again? I think it's called the thing, right? Or is it, am, I, am I mixing it with the hand? I forget what it's called. Anyway, the 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 the, the character of the long hair that's just hair. <laughs> uh, in the end, I'm glad that a happy ending had come uh, from all of the Tormo. This isn't the first struggle I experienced. I feel like it won't be the last, but at least I've got uh, good company to help me bear it all. And for that, I'm truly eternally grateful. Wait, one more thing. Uh, Galatea, it's really unfortunate the things you had to endure. I hope you're in peace now, and that you're no longer in any pain or agony. Perhaps one day, if the opportunity comes, we might get a chance to genuinely know each other. No f uh, facades, no manipulation, no wolves in sheep's clothing. Perhaps then a genuine friendship could blossom between the two of us, when we resurrect you into like a zombie thing, you know? I mean, it's a magic uh, town, apparently. They're like necromancers, <laughs> you know? Oh, anyway, until that day comes, may you rest in peace. Uh, wherever you are right now, I hope that's as bright and sunny there as it is here. Farewell, Galatea, from the bottom of my heart. Galatea, handle it? Anyway. Turin! All's well that ends well. <laughs> okay, this is the final pun, by the way. Alright, there you go. Uh, okay. Also, Moth? Uh, okay. There you go. I, I think I got all the endings. Um, I feel like the it kind of drag. I'm gonna be honest, it dragged on a little bit there. I, you know, it kind of lost me there a little bit. It's kind of like I don't know. It's kind of like it just that. that I always happen. It happens a lot. I feel like in a lot of games, where it's like it, and everything's great, and everything's happy, and it's great, and it's happy, and it's great, and it's great, and it's happy, and it's great. Yeah, I got it. I got the message. You don't have to like 
go into a whole spiel how everything's great for you now, you know? It's like, I don't know. Anyway, um... But yeah, I mean, the only thing, um... I mean, I don't know. Well, let's, well, let's just say, uh, uh, uh what, what I like about it. Uh, so overall, I think it's alright. You know, I like the, the whole little twist, you know, about how, like, the well turns out it was kind of like a, you know, kind of like an anglerfish thing, where it's like, it's not... She wasn't real in the first place, you know, she's trying to trick you into, like, becoming her friend and everything. I felt like we could have spent more time with that, though. I, I felt like the, there's a whole, like, moral of the story here about, like, you know, trusting people and, like, toxic relationships, you know? Kind of like a theme here going on. But, like, um, we didn't really spend long enough for that to really, I feel like, be impactful, you know? Like, we didn't spend a long time with Galatea, I feel like. Uh, she just asks a few questions, and then we choose to give her her legs or not. Yeah, that's kind of it, you know? I, I feel like instead of spending so much time on, like, the whole backstory... I, you know, especially, you know, like, I, I feel like the developers just wanted their OCs, you know, to show up at the end. But I feel like instead of doing that as, like, you know, quote-unquote fan service, I guess, uh, I feel like we should have spent more time with um, maybe uh, Galatea and maybe just, you know, like, hinting towards her darker side, maybe, instead of, like, doing the twist too early. You know, I feel like we, we could, uh, spend, again, let's spend a little bit more time with, like, um, about the mystery, you know, surrounding the well and and the mermaid and the Galatea and maybe like subtle hints to her, like what she actually is and everything, and then you know do the whole thing and then you know, and just and just finish on that instead of like uh, spending time on just introducing a bunch of OCs and like you know, and then you got married and by the way, here's some Cyclops characters, you know, I mean they look fine, but like you know, it's just not relevant to the plot. So I'm like, you know, especially for like a short story, I feel like it needs to be tighter, right? Um, I mean, maybe it's fun. I mean, maybe some people like it, but to me anyway, I just don't like fluff, you know? Especially when it comes to like a short story. I much prefer it just being like very focused on what you're trying to, you know, communicate in terms of like the message, right, of your story. And I feel like anyway, at least the themes anyway, it's kind of like, again, it's kind of like, like actually like a toxic relationship. That's what it seems like anyway, you know? It's kind of like uh, Gal Galatea, you know, she, she seems nice and and generous or whatever and like uh and everything but like she's just doing it to get something from you right so you're very reminiscent of like a toxic relationship or like someone like a like a narcissist like gaslighting you or something or guilt tripping you you know it's like it's really much like that that's the feeling i get and obviously there's the supernatural element of her actually being a corpse you know being a puppy of like a demon but you know that's how that's what stories are you know they're kind of like metaphors so i like the idea though i, mean, I also like the the bad endings and everything i like how you know, it gets kind of really dark, you know, especially if you accept the deal. And in hindsight, actually, you learn that uh, if you do accept the deal, you, you you just die, I guess. You just become a, like a corpse puppet. So when you think about it, it is pretty dark. So I, I like that. I like how, um, you know, I like the psychological horror aspect of it. Um, uh, but yeah, um, dev service. I mean, I guess, yeah, dev service. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. Um, but I, but I do feel like, yeah, it's a little bit too much fluff where, like, you're trying to add, like, a date. I've, I'm not, not a dating sim, but, like, I don't know, like a romance aspect to it where I feel like that wasn't really the premise of the of the story. I feel like the premise, I feel like, anyway, the story is definitely about this well, right? And should you trust this well or should you not, right? So, like, that part of the story, I was interested in. I was kind of like, I like the mystery surrounding that. I just feel like it was a little bit more, it was a little bit too much, um, you know, Again, like uh, extra stuff that doesn't need to be in the story. And also, uh, at, at the part where she just explains everything, you know, and, and by the way, this well is a demon that tricks people and then they consume them and, the, and then they, they turn into a puppet and la na 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 na. Yeah, I felt like that could be left out a little bit, or at least a, uh, or shortened, you know, shortened and a little bit more hinted towards instead of just being explained at the end. Again, that, that's just what I prefer anyway in, in, from visual novels. Um, everyone has different preferences, but for me, I, I much prefer more of like, a, you know, more of like a subtle thing where it's like they don't explain everything at the end. They just kind of like give uh, foreshadowing, right? Foreshadowing and hints, you know, from the beginning. So you come to your own conclusion by the end. You know, it's clear by the end that uh, you know what this well is. You know, it doesn't have to be explained to you, right? And to me, that's a perfect story, you know, like when the story doesn't have to explain it to you, but you know what happened, right? To me, that's like a, a very good story. But anyway, um, uh, but yeah, anything else? Um, uh, the art, by the way. So the art, I think it looks fine, actually, you know? At, at first, to be honest, my first impression of the art, uh, it reminds me of those gacha animations, 
I don't know if, if you're not familiar, like if you look it up, like a gacha animator or whatever, it's kind of like this uh, animation template that people use. And it's a bit of a stereotype, actually, because a lot of like, you know, people use it for like YouTube videos and whatnot, especially like kids, you know, they use it for the random animations. And it's kind of like lazy, right? It's kind of low effort because they use they all use the same template, right, to make their characters. So they all kind of look the same. So it's like we're like chibi, chibified characters and everything. Um, so like it's it, it's uh it's a unfortunate coincidence that the art uh, art style kind of reminds me of that you know and it's not to, not to say that this art style is low effort it's just it reminds me of another style that is low effort so that's that's kind of the you know um prejudice that i have unfortunately uh but it doesn't look bad you know if i remove it you know if i remove that prejudice from my mind and, and just judge it by itself it does look okay i think it's fine it's kind of again it's kind of typified style um, i think it works especially when it gets a little more horror you know i do like that contrast with a cute aesthetic but then um with a, like a horror aspect to it you know when for example when galatea was her like eyes were bleeding you know like black water and like her, her eyes were like you know looking um strange basically you know unfocused and like uh and like basically she's a corpse and everything so that uh, that does look cool uh in my opinion anyway you know i like that so i don't know i like that aesthetic anyway um so yeah i, I think the art overall is, is pretty good um writing is uh, overall okay as well from a technical aspect anyway it, it's good again besides my complaints a small complaints you know overall i think the plot is good it's just that again i wish it was more focused like, uh, trim a little bit of the fat Anyway, I, again, that's my just that's just my preference. Everyone has different preferences. I feel like um, my preference is definitely just prefer like uh, uh, a little bit more, just focus on the plot. You know, I don't know. I, I like and more interactions with the again with Galatea. I feel like I feel like that's the main focus. You know, like this this whole subplot about, for example, Christopher, right? Christopher uh, being married. I don't know. Maybe like a different choices might affect it. Like maybe you know, I I went with the cat. Maybe like maybe you have different scenes if you answered the last question you know or maybe not the last question but the second last question that galatea told you so maybe there are different scenes i'm not sure i don't know if i'll go back and you know i don't know if i'll go back and explore it all i imagine it's mostly the same anyway but i, I was just thinking you know the whole scene of christopher and everything and the subplot about them being married and all, and whatnot it just doesn't seem super relevant you know it could be like a you could add it in it's like a one-off thing you know just mention it but I feel like it, it, it just kind of expanded into like a true ending is kind of like we don't really need that though it's kind of like i, I wanted more about like uh, galatea right about that main thing about how, like the well and everything about how you know i wish it was more i you know funnily enough i, I wish there was more depth to the whole well demon thing right so like it's not just a random demon that just kills people just for fun i guess it, it could be that way too you know it doesn't have to be a redeemable villain necessarily it could also just be like just some demonic creature um you know i th i think that what it is i think it's like it's more so i don't know i i think it's when the demons start talking i guess you know funnily enough when it started talking uh, by itself instead of through galatea that's when i eh, i was kind of like meh it, it felt like a cartoon villain at that point i don't know i i wish it was more like uh as i mentioned though kind of like an scp where it's like it's it's more mysterious you know it's like not explained it, it can like it, it can talk through uh, Galateo, but otherwise it can't. So like otherwise it's just a weird like feral demon creature. That would be kind of cool too. I don't know. Uh, there's a different directions you could take it. I guess. But anyway, I don't know. I, I'm rambling too much basically. But I, I think overall, um, what feels off to me is that uh, I guess they. I wish they did more of the horror, horror aspect. I, I guess you know, because that that's what I was interested in. You know, when it was showing horror stuff, that's obviously when when I was kind of interested in, in the story and whatnot so um so yeah more of that and less of the i don't know just like happy stuff where it's like eh, and then we get married no i'm just not interested in that and the, that's just me though anyway uh i, I think i'll stop going in circles you know a hundred times because i feel like i've repeated myself a million times already so i think overall though i think it's pretty good though i, I think overall you know i want to say though it, it's pretty good overall a solid uh little like visual novel but there you go uh, i guess that's it for rosetta and the well i guess um if you want to see more content then don't forget to click that subscribe button uh you can also check out my other playthroughs on the channel and if you didn't know i also stream these games live so you can change your notification setting 
from personalized to all when you subscribe to get notified when I go live. But there you go. Thanks for watching. Until next time, see you then.